For the following exercises, solve each inequality and write the solution in interval notation. Okay. All right, so we, we've done a couple of problems with this uh, interval notation stuff with absolute values. So if you're new here, um, just go back to a couple of videos in the playlist. Um, it kind of gives you, you know, less challenging ones. But if you're up for a challenge, I'm, I'm here for it. All right, so we need to solve this inequality with absolute values. Okay, so we have the absolute value of 3 over 4 times x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 7. And I said greater than because if you need a little trick, remember the alligator always chomps down on the bigger guy. So here, those were, those were pathetic alligator teeth. <laughs> so the greater number is this one. So the absolute value would be greater than or equal to 7. Now remember, an absolute value always outputs a positive answer. So we have to put, you know, bring in the negative answer. Now, remember when we did equal 7, right? If this equaled 7, we would automatically just break it down into two equations and solve. We're going to do the same thing here. However, there's a little twist. We have to do it in terms of inequalities. The inequality goes is that, or how I like to do it, because it's easy and uh, it's a sure way that you'll never get it wrong, basically. There's always has to be an inequality on both sides of the absolute value. They gave you one. They said that it's greater than or equal to seven, but I know that there's got to be a inequality on this side as well. And that's the negative answer. Now, how do we write that? Is you have to keep the signs exactly the same. So I'm going to do it just like this, and I'm going to introduce the negative seven. And now we have the two inequalities. Negative 7 is greater than or equal to the absolute value. And then the absolute value is greater than or equal to 7. Now I can separate into two equations. And once we do that, you don't have to write the absolute value anymore. So I'm going to say negative 7 is greater than or equal to the, well, we could throw out the absolute value. So we could just say 3 over 4 x minus 5. And then we could do the same for the other one. 3 over 4 x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 7. Now we have two equations in which we just have to solve for x. So let's get down to business. We want to solve for x. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plus 5 on both sides. So that's going to take care of that. So we have a negative 7 plus 5 is a negative 2 has to be greater than or equal to 3 over 4 times x. Now with fractions, I just like to flip it, right? If you're timesing by 3 over 4 and you want to cancel the whole thing out, I'm going to put the 4 up top here and the 3 on the bottom. Whoop. I love how I said it. I'm going to put the 4 on top here and 3 on the bottom. And that way, the 4s cancel out and the 3s cancel out. But whatever you do, you got to do to this side. So times by 4 and divide by 3. 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. Negative 8 over 3, you can't really simplify. So it would be negative 8 over 3 is greater than or equal to x. I just like to say it in terms of x, though. x is a smaller number, right, because the alligator chomps on the bigger one. So x just has to be less than or equal to negative 8 over 3. x has to be less than or equal to negative 8 over 3. Now let's see what's going on over here. we got to solve for x. I'm going to plus 5 on both sides. I got negative, uh, sorry, not negative, 3 over 4. x has to be greater than or equal to 7 plus 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. And then do the same thing. Inverse it, right? Times by 4 over 3. The 4s will cancel out. The 3s will cancel out. So we'll say 4 over 3. And this one I can simplify, right? 
I have a three on the bottom and a 12 up top. Four times three is 12. So this will reduce down to a one and F four. And four times four is uh, 16, right? Yeah. So this would be X just has to be greater than or equal to 16. Cool. Okay. So now we have our two answers. We just need to put it into interval notation. So in this case, X had to be less than or equal to negative eight over three. Did it say how less than, how low can I go? It didn't say. The lowest number in theory is negative infinity. So negative infinity would be my absolute lowest, and I could be as low as up until negative eight over three. Since we have to include it, it has to be a bracket. For the other one, x just has to be greater than or equal to 16, but did it say how high I could go, right? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 million, 20 billion, 20 trillion, infinity. So I have to start at 16, and since it's greater than or equal to, I put it in a bracket, and I can go all the way up until infinity, which is a parenthesis, because that is just a theory concept. So now I just include the two interval notations, and we will union them together with a U. Start with negative infinity first, so I can be negative infinity all the way to negative eight over three, bracket U, 16, infinity. And there is your final answer for that one. That was fun. Okay, next one. The absolute value of three over four times X minus five plus one just has to be less than or equal to 16. So in order to separate them, I need the absolute value by itself. It's with the plus one here, so I have to get rid of that. That's the first thing, minus one and minus one. So now I have the absolute value of three over four X minus five is less than or equal to 16 minus one is 15. Now I have just the absolute value. So I'm ready to make that other one on the other side. Whoa. <laughs> and remember, you have to have the same exact sign. So that, and now instead of 15, it would be negative 15. So there are my two equations. And once you write the two equations, you can get rid of the negative, uh, you can get rid of the absolute value sign. So negative 15 is less than or equal to three over four X minus five. And then I have three over four X minus five has to be less than or equal to 15. Okay, so let's do the top one. Got to solve for X, I'll plus five on both sides. Negative 15 plus five is a negative 10, which is less than or equal to three over four X. It's a fraction, so just inverse it by multiplication. The fours will cancel out, the threes will cancel out. So you'll times by four over three. Uh, let's see, negative 40 over three. Can we simplify that? Does 40 go into three? I don't think so. 40 divided by three, no. So I'm just gonna leave it as negative 40 over three just has to be less than or equal to X which means that X has to be greater than, it has to be greater than this number. Okay, so as of right now, it could be greater than this number, right? It could be equal to this number, it could be greater than, all the way up until infinity, unless this new equation tells us differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make myself some more room so I could do the math. Pull this up, this is the second one. And let's get down to it. Solve for X plus five plus five. Whoop. We have three over four times X is less than or equal to 20. Flip that fraction so that it gets rid of it. 
the fours cancel out, the threes will cancel out, times four divided by three. Oh boy. Uh, does three go into 20? No. So there's no simplifying here. I'm just going to bring this one up. So in this case, we have x is less than or equal to 80 over 3. Okay. So let's read these. It said, the first one says that x can be any number greater than this. However, the second one says that x needs to be less than this. So if x can be greater than this, but less than this number, that's your cutoff. That means that negative 40 over 3, all the way up until x, actually, I'll say this, 80 over 3, x can be anywhere in here, right? It could be this number, it could be this number, or it could be any number in between. So the infinities go bye-bye in this case. So we have x can be greater than or equal to negative 40 over 3, but then it just has to be less than or equal to 80 over 3, and that's your interval notation. If you're, if you're um, doing, you know, non-infinities, you can do it like this, or you can also have brackets as well. You could say bracket negative 40 over 3, comma 80 over 3 and then put a bracket because you both include those numbers either answer is fine with me that's just a professor or teacher preference okay guys what do you think this one was fun let me know in the comments what you thought um if you want to subscribe to the channel that would mean the world to me thank you so much tell your friends tell your classmates uh we just want to help you guys out in math and make it kind of you know, fun and, and show you that math isn't as scary as it seems. All right. So awesome job. You guys are working so hard. Keep up the hard work and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye.